Hi, it's Heather from Thicket Works, and today I'm excited to share the process of creating this altered book shrine. This shrine is dedicated to the quality of radiance. It was custom built to house this set of Baroque jewelry created from polymer clay, but it also holds a surprise in the form of LED lights. This was so much fun to put together. I can't wait to share the process with you. The book that I'm using is about nine inches tall by six and a half inches wide. And the spine is about one inch deep. We'll begin the process by removing the text block. This style of hardbound book uses an adhesive that can be softened with heat. Once you've softened it up, you can begin the process of firmly pulling the end papers away from the edge of the text block. And once you've made an inroad, you can use a bone folder to separate them more completely. With firm pressure, you can now pull the text block out in one complete piece. All that's left to do is to cut away the remaining portions of the end papers. Those won't be necessary for this project. Just be careful not to cut through the exterior of the spine. I've laid out the pieces that I want to incorporate to help me with the design process. There'll be a mirror that sits here on the inside of the front cover. There'll be a niche on the right side that will hold the jewelry components and a niche facing the back of the book that will house the battery pack for the lights. I'll be using these very powerful little magnets to hold the front cover firmly in place when this altered book shrine is closed. I'll be using one of these beautiful decorative hardware pieces from Prima on the front of the book. Here I'm using a pair of dividers to help mark out the outlines of the little flap which will open in the back of the book to allow access to the battery chamber. Here I've marked out the space for the mirror, the little hidden door for the batteries, and where the niche will go that will house the jewelry pieces. I'm punching some holes in the front of the cover to allow me to add the hardware and so that I can then add a magnet as well. I've cut out the aperture that will accept the mirrored glass and it's a nice tight fit. I'm, I'm scoring along the dotted line in order to create a very primitive hinge mechanism for the secret door that will expose the battery pack. This mechanism isn't fancy at all, but it will get the job done. You could, of course, install hinges if you prefer. I'm going for a seamless look on that background. Here I've cut a piece of Fomular project board to act as a replacement for the text block that we've removed and I'm using a thin piece of adhesive backed craft foam to create decorative upper layers for both sides of the interior of the shrine. This piece of adhesive backed craft foam is also going to help reinforce the spine. It will also hold the mirror in place from the inside. Using a bone folder helps reinforce the crease that will get a lot of wear and tear as the book is open and closed. I've cut out the niche for the jewelry compartment and now I'm marking the space where the battery pack will be housed. Both of these niches get lined with strips of black cardstock. Here you see a layer of black foam that's been cut to fit the top of that faux text block. Next, I'm going to prepare some metallic embossed fabric to use as accents in this project and other projects in the future. 
Once the fabric has been prepared, I'm marking out the sizes of the pieces that I'll need to cut. And I'm placing one piece against the back of the book to form a decorative layer at the back of the niche. I'm adding a little loop of seam binding tape to the battery compartment hatch. This becomes a handy pull tab to make it possible to open that door easily. Next, I'm placing black cardstock on the interior of the battery hatch. This will help strengthen the hinge while creating a neater appearance. Next, I'm adding a layer of heavy black gesso to the exterior and the interior of the book cover. I'm also touching up the edges of the Fomular board just in case any of them are exposed. Metallic embossing has been added to the craft foam, which is now going to be mounted onto a piece of medium weight chipboard. One of the magnets is now separated from the stack and embedded in the back of this same piece of chipboard. I'm adding more of the decorative fabric on the back of the chipboard as well so that it's exposed when you open the battery compartment. Next, it's time to prepare to install the fun LED lights. In order to do this, I'll need to create a series of holes through this front panel. I'm also creating some little supports for the inside of the niche so that the chain and the clasp of the pendant can be housed behind the jewelry pieces so that all you'll see are the earrings and the pendant itself when you first open this shrine. A final check to make sure that the battery pack fits perfectly, and it does. I've added a bit of Dresden trim, making sure that everything fits perfectly. And now it's time to begin to melt holes all the way through the formular. I have a sacrificial board underneath here so that I'll avoid damaging my cutting mat with this hot tool. But the tool works perfectly to create not only the holes that I need, but also the little channels that I'll be using to hide the wires. Once all the holes have been created, it's time to begin inserting each of the LEDs into each of the holes and then holding them in place with hot glue. The, the hot glue does not interfere with the wiring at all. It's possible to absolutely encase each of these LEDs in hot glue without any problems whatsoever. Well, looks like I forgot to count properly. I have a bunch of holes here for which I have no lights. So I'm filling them up with hot glue and adding rhinestones. Next, it's time to create a faux mercury glass mirror. If you're interested in learning that process, I'll put a link in the description to a tutorial. Once the mirror has been mounted, I'm adding a sheet of heavy black cardstock on the front cover of the book and then carefully using a brayer to hold everything in place. Now it's time to install our faux text block and make sure that everything fits and it does. So more heat embossing on the spine and now it's time to play with the cover. But before we do anything to it, it's important to put a good quality clear coat over the top to protect the graphic. Once it's been trimmed, it can be adhered directly onto the cover. I like to use a bone folder to press out as many of the wrinkles and air bubbles as possible. An emery board does a great job of removing any excess paper along the edges of the book cover. Next, it's time to install the decorative handle on the front of the cover. There, 
that looks very pretty. Yep. And it works nicely too. The magnets are holding very well. Okay, on to another layer of embossed paper and this is going on the exterior back cover. Here I'm using finger pressure to help find the edges of that hatchway that have to be cut and now we have a secret door. More heat embossing this time on the craft foam panel that's going to line the interior of the front cover. And of course, we have to add just a little bit of Dresden trim. I love adhesive backed craft foam. This stuff is so useful and it's so beautiful when you give it the right kind of surface treatment. You would never know that that's what you're looking at. But super functional, sturdy, and soft to the touch. Okay, now I'm creating the little placard that's going to hold the jewelry pieces in place in that niche. And it's being covered with the same metallic embossed fabric we created earlier. This also gets a little tab made from seam binding tape. And it fits with just pressure inside of the niche. Here you can see how the jewelry is displayed, but the chain and the clasp for the pendant are neatly hidden behind that panel. Okay, now for the really fun stuff. It's time to embellish the cover. The theme of this shrine is radiance, but our radiance can so often be obscured. When we listen to the voices inside that tell us that we're worthless. We're not enough. We don't have the talent, the looks, the youth of that person over there. So why bother? Nothing will dim your light more quickly than listening to those voices. And the only remedy is through the heart. When you love yourself, and you believe in yourself just exactly the way you are, the heart is triumphant. Hidden away in a secret chamber is this reminder of your true self. No one will even know it's there but you. Time to add more embellishments. As we move up the design here, things become lighter and airier and more and more glistening, but every now and then you'll see a tiny jewel trapped in the darkness at the bottom. Because that's how it is. The dark and the light work together. You have a shadow side and you are radiant. The radiance is much more powerful. I hope that you never forget the treasures that are within you. And you never take those awful voices as seriously as they would like you to. Creating an altered book shrine similar to this one might be one way that you can challenge those wretched voices by celebrating your inner beauty and creating a special place to house adornments that make you feel like royalty. You've given yourself a huge gift. This piece means a lot to me. It represents the triumph of radiance over darkness, for today, anyway. I'm really proud of the way I was able to work out all of the considerable engineering challenges in this little piece. And my main hope in creating this video is that 
you will feel inspired to dive deep into your own personal mythology. Use the stories that mean the most to you to help create whatever kind of work supports your radiance. For me, this little shrine was something that had to be made. And even the cheesy flashing lights are part of what makes it so special to me. It's a combination of elegance and silliness of darkness and light of despair and hope just like most human lives. It's the kind of project that I could have continued to work on for another month with complete and utter abandon. But holding it in my hands gives me such a feeling of accomplishment. And that's what I want for you. I want you to be able to sit down at the workbench, think about the themes that matter the most to you, and then build work around them. Work that you're proud of. Work that makes you smile. Thank you for spending this time with me today. This was an important project on a lot of levels for me. And I'm really humbled and grateful that I get to share it with you. Until next time, bye.